Hey guys, it's Mather here once again, and for my final build of Incursion and the Incursion flashback event, I went with my second test of Ignite since the Ignite reworks uh, for the start of this league, and that was a slightly different approach to Ignite in the form of attack-based with Burning Arrow. However, I'm now in this setup using the Tempest Bow, which is pure lightning damage, and then the Stormfire Ring to allow my lightning damage to also cause Ignites. So this is quite a bit Bit of an off-the-wall version of uh, Ignite, but turns out it can scale pretty damn well. Burning Arrow has some very high uh, base hit single target, and then as well as that, a lot of additional burn damage on top of that, uh, more burn damage, that sort of thing, built into the Burning Arrow itself. The Stormfire Ring lets your lightning damage ignite, so you have a really high lightning damage from all of your flat lightning stacking throughout Abyssal Jewels, uh, Gems, Wrath, Herald of Thunder, and then your Storm Cloud hits pretty damn hard with the additional 100% lightning damage, and then it hits pretty fast, and with Burning Arrow, you can also stack two Ignites on an enemy. So where my current Burning Arrow single target uh, ignite damage is 250,000 damage a second. You can stack two of those, which makes it 500,000 burn damage a second against uh, Shaper level targets. And it does feel like quite a substantial amount of single target damage um, compared to say the Fireball character that I tried, which had quite a lot of burn damage. And I thought as much as I could squeeze out for a spell based character. This one seems to be a lot more reliable and a lot heavier on the damage without taking anywhere near as many extreme um, circumstances to make it happen. Now, just like the previous Ignite Elementalist that I played, or it was rather Trickster, uh, the Elementalist here is actually really good on clear speed and does go super fast in the leveling process once you finally get up to the Ignite Prolif sort of um, situation. You burn uh, enemies on the ground, they leave corpses, and they prolif and burn for extreme amounts of damage to everything else. So breaches, double beyonds, all of that sort of stuff just absolutely melts. And getting to level 90 on this character took something like 13 hours. It was extremely fast in that regard. And uh, I did choose Elementalist this time around. You can see a slight example of double beyond here. Uh, I did choose Elementalist this time around instead of a Trickster because uh, I figured the Ignite actual prolif from the shocks that I get uh, and the shock prolif I mean is going to be just a lot more worthwhile than the Trickster version like I did for the Fireball character. Since Trickster gets a lot of extra movement skill ability um, synergy, you don't really get that uh, as a bow character so I didn't value that too much. And instead, I valued the huge amount of uh, Ignite damage you'd get, the Prolif, and then the Shock Prolif, because I will always be shocking with my Lightning damage, since I am pure Lightning, and also with Elemental Equilibrium always up constantly. I just figured Elementalist was going to be a smoother style of uh, play for this type of character this time around, though I think it can definitely be done as a Trickster as well, maybe even a Scion. It's probably between a Trickster and an Elementalist for the OG amounts of Prolif and uh, Shock Prolif. But yeah, considering we are scaling both Lightning and Fire, in this build, which is somewhat of a unique concept to the Ignite character, it does mean that you get a lot of increased shock effect. And since Elementalist does have the guaranteed shock nodes, it just means that there's a little bit more incentive to pick the Elementalist so that you can scale your shocks, get your shock Ignite, uh, prolif happening and just destroy monsters that much easier and all in all ends up being a really smooth playstyle compared to the fireball character where the fireball character um, as pure ignite spellcaster fireball it had good clear and it did have good uh, ignite damage but it was a bit lacking in the single target this character however does not feel lacking in single target at all and as well as that the vile burning arrows really do help you to um, get your good two stacks of Ignite up immediately and then destroy a single target, as you can see with that little boss there, without even swapping out into single target. When we do get into single target, we take out the GMP, put in deadly ailments, and you can see an example here with a tier 15 uh, red elder. The damage just starts to scale really high and um, really consistently once you get a couple of good ignites onto the enemy targets but it does take a bit of time to get that up sometimes you do need your elemental overload up and as well as that since we are lightning based and lightning damage um, is what's scaling our ignite then you do have a huge variation on your ignites currently i think i'm something like Every time I hit the enemy, I could either have an Ignite for 
8,000 damage per second or 120,000 damage per second. And then you stack two of them together, um, get the right ones with LE overload once you hit enough times. If you hit enough times with the higher the high roll average, I guess, uh, you do hit for a large amount of ignite, but that's where just being able to shoot into um, the enemy a lot of times with the storm cloud, the attack speed, the hit chance comes into play. So eventually you can get some really nice ignites happening because there is some RNG involved in this type of a build. And I do have an Uber Elder kill at the end of this video to show you and I do talk or mention the high rolls, the low rolls during that one. So when I high roll, when I get the good ignites happening, monsters, enemies, they absolutely melt. When you get a couple of low rolls, it's pretty noticeable and you're like, where the fuck's my ignite damage? Eventually it does come into play because you just need them high rolls. But overall, it's a pretty smooth playstyle. Did take on all the endgame content, including Uber Elder, and you can do all of it deathless once you um, start to learn the playstyle of an ignite range sort of character. You don't have to be up close to anything. You just um, run around similar to how an essence drain plays, get your ignite, get your damage over time rolling. It lasts a good five, 10 seconds and then just um, let them die. Rather than actually trying to face tank, rather than constantly trying to do damage, but it's really up to you how much you want to squeeze out for how many attacks you do to try and get the maximum amount of high rolls in. But I do have to go over quite a lot of this character at this point for you guys as more or less a guide. Uh, it's going to be fairly extensive. It's not an easy one to level unless you've got all the right leveling uniques because uh, Stormfire is level 80. So yeah, it does take a bit of effort to actually get to it. Once you finally do though, it feels pretty damn nice and probably the best Ignite character I've played in recent memory. So um, yeah, let's get straight into the guide and then um, I'll show you the full Uber Elder kill, which was a bit messy uh, straight after that. So here is the character. It is currently level 91 called Worst Leveling Ever, uh, Elementalist. And I'll explain the name in just a second. But as I mentioned, the character is based almost entirely around the Stormfire Ring. So what it does is says your lightning damage can ignite. So for all intents and purposes, your lightning damage is basically fire damage. Uh, if you still have ignite chance, if you crit with the um, lightning damage, you'll then ignite, and then you'll do a bunch of ignite and burn damage. So we base our entire character around having high lightning damage and then hitting and igniting with it and dealing damage over time through the ignite. We do that with the Tempest Bow because it does 100% increased lightning damage. Uh, as well as some good fast attack speed and a bit of lightning damage as well. And then we stack Abyssal Jewels that do lightning damage to attacks, lightning damage to bows, and uh, ultimately, as well as that, a uh, lightning gem, um, Wrath Aura, Herald of Thunder Aura, or Herald. And then your passive tree is ba uh, based around a bunch of added lightning stuff, some shock uh, chance I guess but shock effect for the most part so you get all this lightning stuff and then it is somewhat of a unique passive tree in that you also grab burn damage and some uh, fire sorts of um, skills as well so the passive tree ends up feeling pretty weird to play around with especially since you do need a sudden ignition as well which is um, making your burning arrow inflict a second ignite on an enemy so instead of just one ignite you deal two if you get two ignites on your enemy so it does end up being pretty weird that you have to get this dex node over here. You have to get a bunch of uh, just fire and cold and burn as well as elemental overload and elemental equilibrium, which ends up serving to function um, by giving all enemies minus 50 to uh, both fire and cold or just fire actually, because uh, all of our damage is pure lightning and a bit of cold. So every time you hit with the burning arrow, you are only hitting with lightning damage. And then that means the enemy is taking negative um, fire resist and more fire damage. So that's the short and fat of the build. It is just um, based around Stormfire, stacking lots of lightning damage and then getting lots of burn, ignite and damage over time. So the end, uh, final links for the character are Burning Arrow, Added Lightning, Elemental Damage with Attacks. You then have GMP so that you can shoot more, but you sub it out for Deadly Ailments whenever you want single target. You then have Unbound Ailments, which increases the uh, damage from your uh, Ignite, as well as increasing the effect of your Shock. And then Burning Damage Support over here uh, as your entire six link. But initially I did use a um, Combustion Support for quite a while. Eventually, I put Combustion onto my Herald of um, Thunder and the Orb of Storms. So the Orb of Storms now also 
uh, ends up igniting things every time it has its ignite chance go off or crits. And as well as that, it then does give a minus fire resist to the enemy that is then ignited. And your Orbis Storms also triggers your elemental overload. So Orbis Storms serves to give the combustion debuff on the enemy and also trigger your elemental overload every time it crits. And besides that, your Herald of Thunder, whenever it zaps things, will also have a high chance of uh, igniting and being attached to combustion, then also give negative fire resist. So that's basically the build. You then just get a bunch of uh, Abyssal Jewels that do uh, lightning damage to both sorts of things. So we have um, Tomb Fist, we have a two socket Light Poacher. The Light Poacher actual Spirit Burst does nothing in this build whatsoever. Uh, so don't worry about that. You're just there for the two Abyssal Sockets. You then run a Combs that you don't have to. Um, not even sure it's the right move. Uh, because you can easily have a high life armor with you know a temple chest or a belly of the beast for example or even a law weave and instead of 6300 life you have about 5700 and the difference is then that you have another six sockets to do some defensive shit with if you really want or some more defense from the chest itself so combs i don't think is at all necessary but it is what i'm using in this build because i haven't used one in a long time and then as well as that, the other interesting thing is a Diadian Dawn. So what it does is ignited enemies, um, enemies ignited by an attack burn 35% faster, which is a pretty large damage increase for your ignite DPS. So you really can't pick any other belt because that one is just going to be way too big for your damage. Uh, igniting things 35% faster or burning things 35% faster. But I want to get to the part about worst leveling ever. So worst leveling ever I predicted simply because Stormfire is level 80 and you're going to be taking all kinds of bullshit lightning and fire nodes without actually having the ability to ignite or do any damage over time through your burn. So you level with a storm cloud, which is a level nine bow, I think, as pure lightning um, all the way up to Tempest. And then from then you're just flat hitting with um, split arrow or tornado shot or whatever just for flat lightning damage and you're not doing any damage over time and you won't until you get a storm fire however if we level that way with pure lightning damage and you put on two call of the brotherhood rings you convert 80 percent of your lightning into cold and then you put on a three dragons mask as soon as you can uh, your cold damage will then ignite but it won't freeze or chill so you have 80 percent of your lightning in cold and that means all of that cold can then ignite and you can start being sort of a budget ass version of Stormfire uh, at around level, well, for me, I did it at Cruel Lab. So first of all, you go into Cruel Lab, you get Beacon of Ruin, and that's when you can start doing your Ignite Prolif and Shock Prolif. Uh, the problem is only 80% of your damage is converted, so you are missing 20%, and you have no meaningful way of actually uh, shocking the enemy because you then need um, fire damage to be able to do that, but you can't have any fire damage because then your elemental equilibrium won't work. So you won't be shocking anything and you'll only have 80% of your damage converted, but it is good enough to start doing burn damage and start leveling that way. So this character will not be a good starter league character. It will not be very um, friendly until you have some leveling uniques like a Stormcloud, like a Tempest, and then like the Call of the Brotherhoods and the Three Dragons. But once you hit level 80, you put on a Stormfire and you pretty much double, maybe even triple your Ignite output and things start to get pretty crazy as you saw during the clips in the video. Uh, that's basically all there is to it. We then run our um, Flame Golem and Ice Golem for buffs thanks to this node over here. You can run two Golems, you do get buffs from them. You grab Paragon of Calamity for some Leech and some Reflect Protection and the rest is history. Flasks don't end up being too important on the build, so we just grab a Quicksilver, we have one Recovery Life Flask and one Instant Life Flask, a Sulfur for a bit of extra um, regen and damage, and a Silver Flask just to move around faster. I run a p uh, Penetrating Arrow Quiver, just so you can have at least one Pierce for your uh, Burning Arrow, because Pierce does end up feeling pretty good uh, for the, you know, penetration and the 
overall prolif of the build. And then you try and get accuracy on your ring and amulet because accuracy is a bit of an issue for this build. If you don't get any sort of accuracy, you'll have something like 80%, maybe even 70%, and it'll feel pretty bad to actually ignite things. And especially when you're going for single target, trying to hit an um, enemy twice to get your two big ignites up, it's gonna be kinda tough if you don't have good accuracy. You can see our ignite damage over here in single target. Uh, I believe that's burning arrow down here it says 14,000 up to 225,000 ignite damage. So that's what I'm talking about with the high rolls and the low rolls. It may take several hits, several uh, good high rolls to get your good ignites up onto an enemy. And when they happen, they will burn over time and absolutely shred something. And lastly, I'll check the POB for you guys. So you can see here, 245,000 ignite. You can have two applications from burning arrow because of the um, sudden ignition jewel over here, but that's roughly what we're looking at against a shaper or guardian. You don't have to tick anything here for elemental equilibrium because you will always be hitting with lightning damage. And that means they will always be weak to fire. So doing that doesn't really do anything for you. Uh, it's already assumed and that is shaper DPS and it is fairly high reliable damage against those targets um, as you could see throughout the clips and as you're about to see through this uber elder um, kill video which didn't go that great this is absolutely deathless viable if you just play everything um, very nicely on this one but I fucked up and I died a couple of times to a few silly mistakes so this is the uber elder kill this was the stormfire um, Tempest, Elementalist, Burning Arrow, Prolif, Ignite, Shock, everything sort of character. It was an absolute blast. If nothing changes um, for this type of setup in the next patch, I can probably recommend it and it should be good for some delving, I reckon, but it's not the easiest thing to level, especially without leveling uniques. So bear that in mind, enjoy the template, use it if you want, or build a different sort of Stormfire character with this type of concept. For now, guys, this is the Uber Elder video. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time. GPS, and I'd like to do that cleaner. Wonder, are my golems dying? Because I actually um, didn't pay any attention to that. Because they should only ever die. Actually, they'll die to shaper slams, won't they? And that happens often enough. Putrefy, rot, spoil, and fest. Okay, well that was a lot smoother on frames already. Hmm, haven't high rolled yet. Well, I don't have EO up. That's kind of a problem for my damage. I still haven't got EO up. There it goes. Wow, that took forever. It was a big part of my damage, so... Oh shit. Oh, I wasn't paying attention there. Dick move, me. Okay, so he's gonna wind up his thing and then stand here shooting. Those at me. Oh, I've left a propagator up for so long. There he is. And he's chilling. That was a shape of juke if ever I've seen one. Another propagator. Could really use some um, flask action. So he's going to do a tentacle attack in a second, isn't he? And I'm going to die. There it is. Come on, I always survived that. You saw how close I was to surviving that. Need another Quicksilver maybe, I don't know.
As soon as I run out of Quicksilver, running around just becomes uh, pretty fucking hard to survive. I like okay here. Wow, my uh, arena is a mess. Milady. Oh shit, he's attacking golems. He's not supposed to do that. No! Mega slow. Did I get stuck on that shit again? I was kind of like looking at the side and not where I was running. I don't think I got stuck, did I? I, need more mana. I think I just took too much damage. Stunned? Right, that may have been it then. Yeah, because when he's uh, doing that slow phase, the fucking shaper balls just stun you for so long. Dude. <sighs> I thought he was doing his tentacle attack, man. So I started running away, just in a straight line, and not his uh, shard attack. I really thought that was a tentacle. Yeah, I deserve that loot. That's the loot I deserve.